Good evening. I'm the director, Jody Bijan. And uh, let me tell you something. When I'm not driving around my sports car or saving small animals, I've been directing this play for a long time, and I'm very proud of these young kids. I am hey, definitely killing Hey, me. what did I what? tell you? What? Stop trying to make my speeches! Hey, it's you called acting. It's called acting. Get out! Out of here! Hold up, hold out. up. Out! No! Go! No. Yes! Go, no, stage beast! Go! No. Yes, sir. Yes. Take this room! Thank Take this room! Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <sighs> I'm the actual director. And welcome to South Fork High School's 2010 production. Frankenstein. Now, there are a few things as an audience that I have to inform you. One is that there is no flash photography, please. And please turn off your cell phones at this time. Oh. <laughs> Hello? Hey, hey, turn your cell phone off. Stay, please! <laughs> no! Do not ruin my intro! I will deal with you at intermission. all the, you guys there, there's a chance that silverware, knives, and forks may fly at you. <laughs> Just so you know, it's, it's a little thing. There's a petition over there that helps save the drama program, as well as music and the arts. <laughs> so at intermission or after the show, would you please sign it? Because without that, this may very well be the last spring play that the school produces. So on that rather depressing note, I'll let you enjoy the show. Good night. We began the lecture series, Scholars with the Origin of Life, with conception, gestation, and birth, the emergence of a human being from the darkness. Today, we look on death. I hear whispering, scholars, and I sense apprehension in the air. Would someone care to articulate the reason for your lack of focus? Well, Madam, she... The other examples have been... I believe what you're trying to say is that she does not seem as dead as the other examples that you have seen. Yes, I grant you, she retains about her a sense of the beauty that must have been hers. Her skin does not appear ravaged by disease, nor are there any mortal injuries apparent, and yet her skin is cold. The light of life is absent from her eyes, and no breath stirs from her lungs. And it is for just such reasons that I have brought her to you. Her history is very simple to explain, though not to understand. This poor child took ill two nights ago from no cause that could be determined. She apparently suddenly felt faint and was comatose within the hour, asleep from which she would never awaken. She died, scholars, and I cannot tell you why. It is beyond our understanding. Death comes to us all, you see. Whether in our old age or in the flower of our youth, suddenly and without warning. We could not save this poor child. One day, one of you might have that knowledge. This is our great task, to remove and prevent the misery of illness, to repair the damage of time, and to hold off the darkness for as long as we are able. I hope in your continued studies, you will learn what is, is needed and what at the risk of sounding less than scientific, I choose to refer to our sacred task as physicians. Are there any questions before we dismiss? Sir. Okay. I'm sorry. In I told regards... you not to do that. <laughs> In regards to the lecture series, there's a rumor circulating about the patron who financed it. As has been said before, the patron has chosen to remain anonymous. The university is grateful for the support and for the opportunity to bring the finest medical minds from throughout Europe here to Ingolstadt. You should concern yourself with your studies, Mr. Buckner, and not with these rumors. Professor, I, I meant no disrespect, but it is well known that the House of Frankenstein supplied the capital for the expenses. As I just stated. And, and when you consider the rumors associated with the name Frankenstein. How dare you broach that subject? I warn you, Mr. Buckner, this institution will not continue to tolerate these flights of fancy. We study medicine here. Not black magic and fairy lore, and these ideas... Professor, please! Everyone has heard the Victor Frankenstein attempt to create life, and it is more than a few that believe it was his creation that hastened his death at such a young age. Why else would the family suppress the notes and journals of after his death? And now the name Frankenstein is associated with an in-depth study of 
life and death of all things around us. Surely this is no coincidence. And what else would it be? Heir Frankenstein. Gentlemen, may I present Heir Wilhelm Frankenstein. Oh, of course. How silly of me. Surely my interests cannot be merely academic. I must be using this series as a ruse to gather medical information from all over Europe. And now that I have it, well, of course, I will use it to my diabolical plot to raise an army of living dead and conquer the world. <laughs> really, gentlemen, I thought you were men of science. Have there been tragedies in my family's past? Of course. What family has not had such occurrences somewhere in its history? But I find this sort of fairy tale gossip to be really beneath you all. Do you not agree? I yes. echo your sentiments, Herr Frankenstein. Life offers enough mysteries for our study without any embellishment. Mr. Bruckner, I will see you in my office this afternoon. Is that understood? <sighs> Dismissed. It is unwise to sneak up on someone in a room containing a corpse. You might frighten someone to death. It is rare someone is so public in their assertions concerning my uncle. It takes either a brave man or a fool to risk that censure in the eyes of his peers. Which are you? At, at Frankenstein, I meant no disrespect earlier. Ah, an apology. Perhaps that answers my question. I meant no disrespect to your uncle, sir. In fact, quite the opposite. I applaud his willingness to go above the conservative notion that is promulgated in this institution. As I said earlier, I don't believe a word of what you said earlier. Or rather, I believe there is rather more truth in your sarcastic response than you wish to admit. I believe you are continuing your uncle's research, although I'm unsure of the motive. Why this interest in my uncle's supposed studies? If, as I believe, Victor Frankenstein succeeded in creating life, then I believe his methods could be improved upon to preserving the life in which you are all born. This is the goal I believe he missed in his quest merely to create life or recreate life, to be more accurate. Yet, if the stories are true, as you claim, then all of his actions ended in tragedy, a tragedy no one would wish to repeat. Of, of course, but what if his methods could be improved upon? And how would you do that? Let me help you with your research, and I'll tell you. <laughs> Mr. Bruckner, I like your utter gall, but may I remind you again, I am not in the midst of any experiments. Good day. Oh, and good luck with your meeting with the professor. The raw materials. The raw materials, they must be preserved. I beg your pardon? I, I theorize that your uncle may have obtained the raw materials. The, the corpses, from a variety of sources. Some, no doubt, were better in terms of freshness. I apologize for the, the crudity of this explanation. But you see, if the process of decomposition has gone far, and the flaw cannot be corrected, it is ingrained in the organism. Unless, unless he did something to preserve them during the process. However, they would have continued to rot, unnoticeably, even as he worked. And your remedy? I know of a lake where the body of a drowned man will never reach the surface. Do you know why? Because the water is too cold to allow it to float. Of course! Cool temperatures, slow chemical reactions, preserving the flesh. I knew it. I knew it that there was more here than there seemed. I have other ideas, Eric Frankenstein. Let me work with you. Together, we can solve the puzzle your uncle discovered. You do not know what you're asking. I'm sorry, I cannot allow it. It would be sad if the local people were to hear of these new experiments. <laughs> A superstitious lot, based on the stories they tell. Surely that force an inquest and an examination of your properties? So you're not about blackmail, then? I could not go through with it. Ah, perhaps you can be trusted, then. Leave here at once and come to the estate immediately. Say little to others, but make certain no one will interfere with you while you work. Thank you, Aunt Frankenstein. You will not regret this. I already do. Let us pray that you do not come too as well.
not imagine being more bored. If not for your company, Lady Madeline, I shudder to think how I'd get through the day. You flatter me, Baroness. Yet I know for a fact that everyone who is anyone never misses a chance to pay a call to the Baron and Baroness von Bick. To be left off the guest roll of one of your charming galas is a veritable death sentence to one's social standing. Ah, and who flatters who, Madeline? As if I could have such an effect on someone with just a few strokes of a pen. Yours is a very influential pen, Baroness. <laughs> Perhaps so, but having such an influence comes with a price, does it not? Every time I approach a group in conversation at a party, the topic of conversation often mysteriously changes. No doubt to avoid making a bad impression and no longer find themselves among the invited. But that means I have missed out on so much of the best gossip. <laughs> now I see why you value our friendship so much. Well, it simply is frustrating not going everyone else's business. I do so love a good scandal. And you always seem to know about them before anyone else. Yes, it seems information has a way of falling into my lap. <laughs> but sadly, there is little in the way of a scandal now. Almost too quiet, in fact. Like the calm before a storm. Ah, Rupert, my love. Where have you been? You've been gone all morning. Ladies. My dear, I specifically told you last night I intended on doing, I intended on doing a bit of hunting this morning. Oh, yes, now I remember. It seems no matter the time of year, there's always something worth killing out those woods. Barbaric, I say. What was it to be today, Rupert? Rabbit, well, you'll be happy to learn that I return home empty handed this time. Not for want of trying, I'm sure, Baron. It was odd, really. The force was unnaturally quiet. Like everything was, was in hiding. We had no luck whatsoever. Why were you hunting, Rupert? North, near the Frankenstein estate. Oh, that reminds me. Madeline, what do you hear about poor Wilhelm? We haven't heard from him in quite some time. He was both a charming guest and an accomplished host. A ball of the Frankenstein estate was an affair not to be forgotten. Yet it seems now, he only rarely leaves home at all. Indeed. Few men can compete with Wilhelm for charm, intelligence, wit. I myself found him almost irresistible, and had he not been married when we first met, well, let's just say the Baron isn't the only person capable of mounting a hunting expedition. Madeline, I can understand how you are, but sometimes you are an incorrigible whore. <laughs> to your question. I can add little to what you already know. You know of his study, the sponsorship of the study at the university some six months ago, or was it more? Well, he retreated to his estate, and not a word has been heard of since. I've encountered some of his staff in town, but they're an amazingly tight-lipped lot. Family loyalty. After all, not so long ago the name Frankenstein was associated with the worst kind of scandal. Who could forget? Really, ladies, what is the great mystery? Wilhelm suffering is something none of us can imagine. If his recovery is slow, that is to be expected. No one is questioning the death of his despair, Rupert. We simply want him to be able to enjoy life again. Madeline, I should take it very poorly of you. If you were to take advantage of Wilhelm in the state he is in. Rupert. Would you shoot a duck swimming in a lake? Of course not. There's no sport in that. Exactly. We both have our rules, you see. What is it, Jurgen? The weather looks auspicious, Wilhelm. It, it, it could be tonight. Is everything else in readiness? For the most part, there's, there's still the matter of the brain. Leave the brain to me. That was my intention. Not that I could have any other. 
Seeing that I cannot fathom your own intentions. You do not need to understand them. <laughs> I suppose not. Well, I'll leave you to your thoughts. Your anger is unjustified. You join me of your own free will. I did not seek you out. Have I not been valuable? For you rather were not here. Not at all. With your assistance, I've been able to correct all the flaws I've made in previous attempts. Because of you, I feel confident that this time, everything will go as planned. And beyond that, I've come to see you more than just simply a colleague, but as a friend. Who's that you? And I find it hard to understand this change in attitude of late. What is bothering you? When I came here, I thought the purpose of our work was for the betterment of mankind, to understand death, to find the means of thwarting it. So have I always feared the work of your uncle, Wilhelm? You are not your uncle. Your motive is not the same as his. It's a selfish one. Many great things have been discovered under such motive. Yes, but never without a cause. Your uncle's motives are purer than you, and yet, and yet, he lies over there. I fear for you, Wilhelm. Save your fear. It is not possible what you want. You do not think we will succeed? In the creation? Yes. It's been done before, after all. And as you say, you corrected the flaws in your previous attempts. But what you want, you cannot bring her back, Wilhelm. You do not know what you speak. That's because you have not spoken of her to me. But I'm not a fool. I see how often you come here. The servants whisper about you and your loss. I grieve for you, but, but what awaits in that lab is not Anna. There is no part of her in there. What do you know of Anna? What do you know of how I feel? You are younger than me. When I was your age, I was full of hope. In life, in promise. And then I met her, and I realized how empty my life had really been until then. How can you understand? How can you presume to know? To know that there is nothing in this life that does not remind me of her. A chance, fragrance, and breeze. But to me, it is the scent of her head, fresh and clean. A warm, flickering fire in the cold of night. In it, I see your eyes dance again. A claw against the palm of my hand. It is the softness of her wedding dress. Everywhere I turn, I am reminded. She haunts me. She lives on all around me. If I thought there were no other way, I would endure no more and sleep by her side. You cannot know. You do not know. But there is another way. Let us go to the lab, where you will deal with what you think is possible and leave what is impossible to me. Not so confident as you appear. I am a scientist. Though I have learned from my past mistakes, it would be foolish to discount the possibility of failure. It seems you shall find out soon enough. Bring me the last of the brain solutions, then begin the warming process. I'm so unsure what these solutions are to accomplish. The brain, Jurgen, is the most important organ in the body, the seat of all thought and emotion. Most importantly, memory. I have done what I could to create a perfect physical specimen, collecting the parts from all over Europe. The muscles of a French dancer, the vocal cords of an Italian opera singer. But all of that is meaningless without the skills and memories to control them. Chemistry, Jurgen, is the key, I believe. And these solutions, distilled from the memories of 
skilled artists, singers, sculptors, and philosophers. We'll take roots in her brain and give her all the thoughts and memories she will need. Mentally and physically, she will be perfect. You talk of creating perfection in the house of God. A little humbleness might be appropriate, no huh? What better place for such an act? God created us in his own image. You don't expect us to become creators as well. But God created. He did out of love. As do I. Love and obsession are not the same. Hurry, Jurgen. The lightning is increasing and her flesh is warming. Prepare to raise the lightning rod. Where is the food? On the table. Ready? Ready. Then her birth is at hand. I shall drain the fluid from the artificial womb, and when I give you the signal, raise the lightning rod. As soon as we have harnessed the lightning, drop the rod. The second bolt will undo all of our work. Understood? Yes. Now! Wilhelm. Here. Are you all right? Yes. And, and you? Yes. Is it? I don't know. She must have a past. A past? How? Mesmerism, Jurgen. Or more precisely, artificial somnambulism. <laughs> we will mold this clay into a proper form. This is only the beginning. You can give her a past, though, huh? Or can you give her a soul? My God, what is she? <laughs> Dazzling whatever you wear, the Baroness. Wilhelm, you are a dear. It saddens me that so charming a young man as yourself is not seen out and about more often. I was so pleasantly surprised to receive your invitation to visit this weekend. Well, in my absence, I have grown to miss you all quite, quite greatly, especially Lady Madeline's singing talents. Yes, Madeline, please sing us something from your extensive repertoire. Yes, I've heard your voice has bewitched the hearts of many young men. I've heard it's broken many of them also. Of course, Wilhelm. Would say me so spirit suit you? Anything would suit me as long as you sing it, Lady Madeline.
Well, then, I hope this signifies your return to society. Baron, I could not agree with you more. Wilhelm, what is this we hear of a young woman you've taken in? Yes, it is all the talk around town. Does she have you bewitched, Wilhelm? Is that the reason for your sudden reappearance? A young woman? What is this all about? And more importantly, why am I the last to hear of it? Really, Baroness? I'm surprised your eyes and ears about town have not kept you better informed. I hope your skills are not slipping. <laughs> Wilhelm, even when you insult me, it sounds flattering. <laughs> we really have missed you. Now tell me everything, or I shall have you flogged. <laughs> well, we found her wandering the estate, dressed in tatters and completely inarticulate. She had suffered a blow to the head, it seemed. Well, we nursed her back to health, but she has no memory of where she came from or how she got here, I'm afraid. Have you made any attempts to find her relations? Yes, I have contacted the authorities here and elsewhere for any cases of a missing young woman, but it is as if she simply never existed before. Perhaps she comes from poor relations, who have no means to search for her. I would agree with you, Lady Madeline, but her education seems simply too good for that to be the case. She speaks several languages, for instance, although she cannot remember ever being to the places in which they are spoken. Mystery. How delightful. When shall we meet her? Very soon, Baroness. I only wanted you to be more accustomed to her situation before I introduced you. Of course. Miriam, could you ask Fallen Liesel to attend us now? Yes, sir. And sir, the pantry was robbed again last night. Again? Yes, sir. And this time the thief was seen by Sophie. Who was it? Well, no one she recognized, but it was a woman of average size, apparently, with fair hair. Sophie tried to stop her, foolish on her part. The woman easily overpowered her and got away. Oh, and she spoke oddly, Sophie said, like she had no language at all but was trying to talk. The devil, you say? What should we do about the pantry, sir? Have it guarded, and check the doors throughout the night. Wake me up, should anything be amiss. Understood? Of course, sir. Your pardon. Tedious matters of the estate must be attended to at times. Of course. Is your young cousin to dine with us, Wilhelm? Jurgen? He should have been here ages ago, blast him. Thinking of adding him to your collection, Lady Burkhardt? How scandalous! What sort of woman do you take me for? The kind who is not so easily scandalized. <laughs> <laughs> I simply like to know what options are available. Lady Madeline, I encourage you wholeheartedly in such an enterprise. She really need, you're going to really need something to shake him from his studies. Ah, and here she is now. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. May I introduce Fraulein Lisa. <laughs> Parents, Baroness von Vick, Herr Joseph Curden, and Lady Madeleine Burkhardt. It is truly a pleasure to meet all of you. How is it you know your name is Fraulein Liesel and so little else? Actually, Baroness, I don't even know my name. I picked Liesel, you see, as I had to have something to go by. Uh, Frankenstein has been very kind and understanding of my situation. And as time goes on, Memories seem to be swimming out of the mists. Just nothing that tells me who I am or where I'm from, I'm afraid. What sorts of memories? Bits and pieces, I would say. I remember swimming in a cold lake on a hot summer's day, for instance. Interesting, but ultimately unhelpful. Indeed, it must be very frustrating. Oh, it is. I don't wish to be a burden on Herr Frankenstein's hospitality any longer than I must. He's already done so much for me. Nonsense. You are no burden at all. Such a creature as you, my dear, could never be a burden. And besides, if it is you that has prompted Wilhelm from his lethargy, we might hope you to stay definitely. Thank you, Baroness. You're too kind. My apologies for my lateness. I was on my studies and lost track of time. See, what did I tell you, Lady Madeline? Baron, Baroness von Vick. Herr Josef Kernan and Lady Madeleine Burkhardt. May I introduce Herr Jürgen Ruppner, my young cousin from Ingolstadt. Wilhelm, I was unaware that there are any other Frankensteins. I thought you were the last of them. Indeed I am. I'm not a Frankenstein, but a distant relation 
Erkanen, although Wilhelm has been supportive nonetheless. Well, then, Liesel. Herr Bruckner. We were just speaking of Liesel's mysterious past, Jürgen. You give us a chance to change to a lighter topic of conversation. Just so long as it serves a purpose, Wilhelm. <laughs> <laughs> and what studies occupy so much of your time that we are denied your company, Herr Bruckner? My medical studies, Lady Burkhart. Madeline, please. And if I may, Jürgen? Uh, of course. As I was saying, Madeline, my medical studies do take time, although I've been helping Wilhelm get information on Fraulein Liesel here. Herr Bruckner has been very helpful with my situation. Sometimes we spend simply hours talking, sorting through my scattered memories. He's been quite the comfort. I can imagine. What do you want? Why, I, I simply want to... What am I doing here? What? Who are you? Lady Madeline, my dear, we just met. I, I don't know you, I... I don't know this place. Who are you people? Wilhelm? Uh, Baroness, please, stay calm, all of you. She sometimes has these episodes, probably caused by the blow to her head. You! It's you, isn't it? What have you done to me? These are not my hands. Not... Not my hair. Who am I? Stay back! All of you! Stay away from me! Are you demons from hell coming to torment me? I was good, wasn't I? I thought I was good! Is this hell then? Move it! Be careful! Out! All of you! No words, demon! Say no words! I'm sorry, I must. Let there be light. Make sure we are secure. This is madness, Wilhelm. Your methods are not working. Do not presume to tell me what you know nothing about. I have studied these techniques, not you. And I tell you they are working. Her attacks have become farther apart each time. Yes, but more severe each time as well. What if she hurt someone? It was a defensive posture. She was scared. Or at least, part of her is. I admit, when I administered the brain solutions, I only intended to give her additional skills, not more personalities. But it seems these other selves are inseparable from the skills. Still, I know I can bring them all together somehow. Thread by thread, I am weaving her personality. Lisa, do you hear me? Who is Lisa? You are all Lisa now. You must understand that. There are many here, but none called Liesel. Who am I speaking to now? I'm Pauline. I was a dancer once. This is madness, Wilhelm. If I had known... Too late for such thoughts! We'll be quiet. We'll all work together, and you will be one. You will be Liesel. Find the memories that belong to Liesel. The memories I have placed there. Have you found them? Yes, we have found them. No, you must think it's I, not as we. This is another memory of Liesel's. When you were 16, you were taken to a ball. And at that ball, you danced with a very dashing young man. You danced with him many times that night. And onlookers began to whisper. Some unpleasant stories began to pass about the town gossips. But when you heard such things, you simply smiled, as you often do, and said, let them say what they will. A waltz is just a waltz, after all. You would say this many more times throughout your life, whenever you were confronted with any sort of hearsay. This is Liesel's memory. This is your memory. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. Good. Now when I count to three, you will fall asleep and have no memory of what has just happened. One. Two, three. You say you know what you are doing, Wilhelm, but you're experimenting even now. What will you do when your work fails? I will not fail, but I have implanted certain command words as a precaution. Let there be light puts her into an instant trance, as you have just seen. And I can undo all of my handiwork and start again by saying, 
There is no freedom without truth. That's an ironic choice, but would that not be catastrophic to her mentally? She would be much as she was at birth, except with all the memories of everything that has tr transpired since. The sessions, everything. No doubt it would be greatly disturbing. But I do not expect to have to resort to such measures, however. Stop this now, Wilhelm. No, no matter what you do, she will not be your Anna. And it had a specific past, a specific time, and was affected by specific people and happenings. You cannot put them all into Liesel, because you cannot possibly know them all. And even if you come close, she'll still just be a watered-down reflection of Anna. Stop this stout, Wilhelm, and let her be simply Liesel. Let her have her own soul. For a man of science, you speak too much of souls. Perhaps, but I know there's something special in each person. Quality, if you will. Something intangible that you feel slip away as a person dies. I cannot measure it, but I know it is there. With Liesel, however, everything is confused. There's something there, but is it a soul? When you put the memories of others into Liesel, do you call back their souls? Or are they simply echoes of their thoughts? Oh God, look on what you have done. Take pity on it and give it a soul of its own. Enough! I will hear no more of this mysticism today. A man of science, indeed. I am a man of science, but this experience has perhaps awakened my greater sense of conscience. I know that this is wrong, and I know that there will be a price for it. Everything in life has its price, Jurgen. The difference between you and I is that I am willing to pay them. Come, help me take her to her room. by your own great skill. Oh, Jürgen, you'll make me blush. I doubt that very much, Lady Madeline. You are a worthy sparring partner indeed, even if I only have half of your attention. How lucky she must be to have all of it. Who? Don't be coy. I am a woman of the world, after all. Will she be joining us tonight, or is she still in seclusion? I don't know. The event this afternoon was rather draining, I should think. Does she know? No. No one knows. And no one will ever know. What point will there be after all? She has too many problems for me to add to them. Besides, there's Wilhelm. Why must men be so daft about these things? She does not love Wilhelm. What makes you so certain? Good Lord, Jürgen. She did nearly everything but throttle me when I looked at you at the table today. But that was the thing. No, no, no. Before that. It's amazing we have not died out as a species. Even if what you say is true, Wilhelm is my friend. I, I could never. Go to her, you idiot. Leave Wilhelm to me. Wilhelm! Come talk with me for a moment. Well, I... Come, come, you can miss one dance. This young lord of yours. Again, Lady Madeline, my apologies for the incident this afternoon. You will understand that the road to recovery will be a long one. Yes. Yes, I understand. Interesting that you bring up the subject of recovery. Oh? I 
a pair, honestly. Well, I had, you know, she really is a very sweet creature. Well, when she's not bright, she's flat bare at any rate. <laughs> I really had to smile at the way she defended Jorgen from me and my flirtations. Defended? Well, hell, don't tell me you didn't notice. Your skills and observation of a social nature are slipping. Out of practice, I expect. Yes, very like. You do expect she would make a poor recovery, don't you? I would hate for that poor boy to fall in love with her only to lose her. Oh, we'll help. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to bring up. Yes, I expect her to make a full recovery from everything that is wrong with her. Friends, it grows late, and I fear it is time to retire. I look forward to seeing you all at breakfast. The servants will see you to your room, should you need anything else tonight. You're going to stay a moment. What is it, Bill? Huh? I trusted you as I have trusted no one else. Why have you betrayed me? Lady Madeline said something. Yes, apparently I'm the last to know. And the last they must all be having at what a blind old fool Frankenstein is. Since when have you cared what society thought? I don't, but I do care when a promise made is broken. If I have broken faith with you, then so be it. I cannot help how I feel, though, though. She does not love you. But she will. The guests have all retired to their rooms, sir. Will there be anything else? Yes. Could you ask Fraulein Liesel to come down to the ballroom, please? There are matters with her that I must discuss. Of course, sir. This is madness, Vilho. Will you open up her mind every time she does something you do not like? Will she never have any free will of her own? When she is finished. She is not a painting that you could change to suit you in every other whim. She is flesh and blood, however brought into being. I made her, she is mine, and she will be perfect. Would you have stood by and allowed us to have an Anna? Don't you dare speak of her! I know that you loved her. And I know that I love Liesel. I'll take her away. You what? I will! Anything to prevent those atrocities, but... Wilhelm, you sent for me? What's the matter? Whoa! Liesel, come away with me. What? You heard me. Don't stay here another night. It's too dangerous for you. Danger? What danger could befall her here? Honestly, Jürgen, I don't understand your concern. Yes, Jürgen, what is the danger? You'd have me tell her. Tell her what? No. Someday she'll have to know, Wilhelm. It will not be I who relieves you of that task. Until later. Is everything all right, Wilhelm? Jürgen seemed very upset, unlike I've ever seen him before. Do you think Let there be light. Liesel? I... We... I am here. What are your feelings towards me? We hate you. I... I, I ask Liesel, not you others. What are your feelings towards me? You are my benefactor. My rescuer. I feel kindly toward you. Nothing more? More. No love? Love. Romantic love. Do you feel anything of the sort? Yes. I feel love. For whom? For Jürgen. Listen to me, Liesel. Jürgen is not as he seems. He is not? No. When you see him next, he will make you feel uneasy. Yes. You will feel that he is a threat to you, that he needs you harm in some way. Yes. He is a threat to me. I do not want him to hurt me. Good. And when I count to three, you will wake up and have no memory of what has just happened. One, two, three. Do you think that we should go after him? Oh, no. I do not think that will be necessary. All right. What was it that you wished to speak to me about? Liesel, you've had a trying day, and I would not wish to prolong your recovery. 
Go back to bed and I will discuss this matter further with you in the morning. As you wish. Good night, Wilhelm. Good night, Liesl. Good night, my love. Say to you. Nothing really. Excuse me. Liesl, what are you doing up so late? I I couldn't sleep and I was hungry, so do, I do you often have trouble sleeping? Jurgen. Erbruckner, that's a rather personal matter. Now, if you will excuse me. Personal matter? Are you making some kind of joke? I have something for you. It it may seem rather sudden. What do you mean? It's a ring. It belonged to my mother. It's beautiful. I want you to have it. You mean... <gasps> no, no, I couldn't possibly accept it. What? Why not? Why are you suddenly so cold? Have I done something wrong? Herr Bruckner, I... <sighs> what is it with this Herr Bruckner again? He's done something to you, hasn't he? That monster... Will he stop at nothing? Once I respected him, and then I pitied him, but now he must be stopped, somehow immediately. Uh, are you speaking of Wilhelm? Who else? You must help me, Liesl. Somehow, we must fight what he's done to you. What has he done to me, other than save my life and give me a future? No, that's what he wants you to think, but all this time he's been- Herr Brunner, let me go! You're frightening me! Frightening you? I could never hurt you. And yet you just did. But never again. Miriam, I'm leaving tonight. Now. Tonight, sir? At this hour? Yes, I can't stay here any longer. I must inform that Frankenstein. Will you see my bags downstairs? Of course, sir. Liesl, I'm leaving tonight, but I can't leave things as they are. Please, let me talk to you. Guard throughout the house. Everyone, we have all suffered a terrible tragedy here tonight. No doubt there will be an inquest when the authorities arrive. I encourage you all to go back to your rooms and get what little sleep will be possible tonight. I guarantee you, you will be safe in your rooms. And in the light of day, we will begin to transpire what has happened here. We'll help. I cannot sleep with a mad woman just down the hall from me. You don't mean to say- Well, how you are blinded by your infatuation. I know you want to help her, but you saw her with that knife today. As I said earlier, these episodes- Are related to her injury? Yes, so you have said. But is she any less mad because we know the reason for her madness? She will be guarded. The entire house will. No one will move lest I know of it. You can have no fear of her, Lady Madeline. And in the morning, we will begin to sort out all of this. Well, 
home she threatens me with a knife in the light of day. I will take no chances. I'm sorry. Very the well. The authorities may question me at home. Very well. I will have Bernadette gather your things. Thank you, Wilhelm. And I'm sorry. Bye. And you saw no one outside? No one running from the body? No, I saw no one. How many times do I have to tell you? And how did you come to be crouched over the body again? I saw Jurgen lying there, and I ran to him to see what was the matter. He was silent and bleeding, and I couldn't wake him. I screamed. Very well. And Frankenstein. A moment. It looks very bad. A young girl, possibly mad or delusional, and with a history of violence. I would hardly say that she has a history. She and the dead man were romantically entangled. That has been exaggerated. Perhaps, perhaps not. They're overheard arguing in the hallway right before the murder, to which she admits. Yes, but does that not demonstrate her lack of deceit? Why admit to such an incriminating detail, but deny all the rest? Crimes of passion are rarely logical in nature, Herr Frankenstein. Passion is the antithesis of logic. Passion overwhelms logic and we find ourselves doing things we never would have done if we had only reasoned things out. A man of science such as you should know that. Yes, you're right, of course. Passion does overwhelm logic at times. We will follow up on this other lead, the person hiding on the estate. It is possible that she is the culprit, although she's never done more than steal food. Although, I myself wonder if your Fraulein Liesel and she are not one and the same person. No. I could see how you could draw that conclusion, but no, it is simply impossible. How can you be so sure? Keep her under your guard. It is more than likely I'll be taking her into custody. Very well. Good day, Constable. How are you feeling, Liesel? That is the problem. I don't know how I feel. I liked Jurgen, and I know I did. I, I even thought that I, I, at least until yesterday, but I cannot cry. Something changed when I saw him last night. What do you mean something changed? Something about him was not right. He seemed sinister somehow. He frightened me. When I think of the things that he said, they're not so frightening on their own, but when he was there, I, I thought that he might hurt me somehow. You thought what? That he might hurt me. I, I know it's foolish, especially when he had been so kind to me before. Oh my God. What is it? I don't believe it. I never intended- Wilhelm, calm down. You're getting very agitated. And all because of some idle chatter at the party last night. Idle chatter? Wilhelm, you should know better than to listen to such things. Let them say what they will. A waltz is just a waltz, after all. Wilhelm, don't stare at me so. What is it? That... that is very something like my Anna would have said. Oh. You're still staring, Wilhelm. Do I remind you of her? No, or, or, or rather, yes. Many things you do remind me of her, but they also remind me of how utterly unlike her you really are. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to cause you pain. I don't believe it. It is all my fault, and now I can never tell him. Wilhelm, you mustn't blame yourself. How could you have known? I remember something from when I was quite young, I assume. An old beggar wandered into the village. He was very pathetic, and I told him that he could sleep in our barn. Well, it turns out that he... It turned had... out that he was stealing things and hiding them in the barn. Your mother was very angry when she found out. But she forgave you, because you had done it out of the kindness of your heart, and had not had known what you were doing. Yes. How did you know that story? I, I, I never told you that before. You cannot comfort me with my own inventions. What does that mean? It, it means none of it is real. It means I put that thought inside you. It means, it means I am guilty. You always tell me I need to rest when I have such thoughts, so 
Perhaps we both need to rest. I hope that you find some peace soon, Wilhelm. I deserve to find no peace ever again. Don't you see? Until yesterday, you were falling in love with Jürgen. I wanted you to turn away from him. But I never thought that you would kill him. I didn't kill him, Wilhelm. Perhaps you did and don't remember. Memory is a slippery creature, especially for you. I don't understand any of this. How could you put thoughts into my mind? Why are you saying this? Why do you wish to upset me this way? Remember when you blamed your brother for breaking your mother's favorite mixing bowl? What? Or when you left home for the first time. You cried the entire trip, and a man on the coach offered you chocolates to stop. Or how about when your father gave you that diary to write in for your birthday? How do you know all of this? Who, who told you? I did it, Liesl. Don't you see? That's not all I put in your mind. I put those thoughts about Jürgen in your mind. You... You are mad. You are mad. You... You know some sort of black art or, or witchcraft. No, but I have made science a black art. It is all science, Liesl. With science, I put those memories in you, just as I placed your heart in your chest and your eyes in your face. What are you saying? I'm saying I made you. Made me? Yes. You were to be my finest creation, a fitting replacement for the wife I had lost. This is blasphemous. If it is, then you are a living sacrilege. I am leaving. Fine. Let me show you stop by the chat on the way I've been staying. It was where you were born, after all. What? My laboratory, actually. Perhaps it will drive some memories loose for you, though I did my best to suppress them. It is where I put you together, piece by piece, with Jürgen's help. And then I brought you to the light with a bolt of lightning. But that was only the beginning of the blasphemy. The real horror was when I tried to mold your thoughts into those of my dead wife. Jürgen was right to fight me on it. But I was too blinded by my passion to see what should have been obvious. Now it is too late. I can never tell him. I can't believe you. There's no freedom without truth! Ah! Ah! What have you done? Ah! I have given you back your free will and every memory you've ever had. I have given you the truth. Pain, cold, darkness, you, you gave me food, Jürgen was there, oh, oh my god, I am a monster. No, I am the monster. I did this to you. You don't even know what you have done. Shall I dance for you, Monsieur Lebeau? I've always dreamed of being in the ballet. Sit down and eat your dinner, Prince. You want to grow up big and strong like your father, don't you? You really thought that you could get away with this, Harold? After all you've done to me, no one treats me that way! No one! Don't cry, sister. Know that I'm going to a better place. I, I'm only sad to be leaving you. Oh my god! What have I done? I had no right. There's so many voices. These are not my hands. Not, not my skin. Is there anything that is mine? Anything that is me? What am I? Is nothing about me real? I don't know what is real anymore. Sir, Fraulein Liesl is gone. Where did she go? She took a horse from the stable and rode off to the chapel. She came out carrying some papers and then just rode away. Were we to keep her, sir? The files. She's for each. She's, she's taking the files where each part of her came from. Sir? Yes, we were to keep her here. But do not go after her. Let her go. But sir, the fact that she left. Doesn't that make it more likely that she's guilty? Never trust appearances, Bernadette. Though no doubt many will see it as you do. 
I wonder if we will see the Midnight Visitor anymore now, sir. Now that I think about it, Sophie's description did fit Fraulein Liesel perfectly. Maybe the two were connected all along? No, you're mistaken. There can be no connection. Though she will be back. With all due respect, I don't think so, sir. She'd likely be arrested as soon as she returned. Why would she risk that? Answers she cannot find anywhere else, Bernadette. We all want answers from God at some point. Hello! You frightened me. What are you doing hiding in that, those bushes over there? I... I'm traveling alone, you see, and you never know who might be out and mean you harm. You speak the truth, young lady, and there's no denying it. You seem rather well dressed to be out alone on these roads. Our fates are always on the way up or on the way down, it seems, and it shouldn't matter how you're dressed along the journey. What did you say? Uh, I meant no offense. I it's just a saying I once heard. And no harm in it, but a great deal of truth. My sister Cuddy used to say exactly the same thing. Did she? Indeed she did. She was a wise woman, Greta was. So, what has he traveling the roads? Visiting relatives, you might say. You keep saying was. If I'm not prying, have you lost your sister? Yes, God rest her soul. She took sick with the fever. It came upon her all of a sudden. Nothing anyone could do but try and make her feel more comfortable. She was a much greater woman than I, kinder, gentler. You must miss her a great deal. Naturally. All we have in this world is each other, girl, and you remember that. I will. We never have enough time we need in this world, and I expect, even if we had more, it would still never be enough. It's just, we wait until it's too late to say things and ask things. The way we're made, I expect. The way we're made. If you could ask your sister one thing, what would it be? Well, did she regret taking care of us kids when our mother died? She never complained, but she had plans of her own at once and had to give them up. Well, you ought to know the answer to that without having to ask, oughtn't you? What? She believed like you did, that all you have is each other. Yes, but she never had a husband of her own. Having a regret is not the same thing as holding a grudge. No, that's true. You speak much like she did. It's easy to talk to you, too. Thank you. We didn't talk about it much, but I wondered if she blamed me for her taking sick. What? Why would she? Well, when she went to go collect the firewood, she had no shawl to wear. And it was I who had it in the wash and hadn't done it. If I had done my part, she would have been warm and not taken sick. Oh, Sonia, don't be daft. I could have taken the shawl out of the laundry if I really thought it would be that cold. Don't tell me you've been worrying yourself about that all this time. What did you say? I'm sorry. That was like hearing my own sister's voice again. What are you about here? How do you know these things? It's complicated. I, I don't want to scare you. I, what you said about, about all we have in this world is each other. I believe that too. I've been trying to find a place where I belong. I've been searching for a very long time now. Now I'm here with you, hoping that this is the time. I, I don't understand. You want to belong here? I don't know how to explain it to you. Just, just know that a part of your sister is here, in me. And, and that is what has brought me here. Are you some kind of witch? No, 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 not a witch. Oh, I've said too much. Please, let's just sit and talk for a little while longer, please. If you are not a witch and somehow you're possessed, stay away from me. No, no, please don't go, please. Sister, please stay. I'm so lonely without you. I want to cook and clean and sit with you by the fire again and, and help you with the little ones. Is Ingrid still growing faster than you can make new dresses? Please just let me come home, please. Stay away from me. Back, demon. Possessed, stay away. <laughs> You see what you did? 
just when we were starting to connect. She'll tell the authorities and they'll be out searching soon. I must get back to the horse and head up quickly. Another wasted journey. All this time I've learned nothing. I found no place, no home. I can't go on like this. You must all leave me alone. Wilhelm should not have made me, but he did. He should not have used you, but he did. I should not be, but I am. My mind is a framework. But if you would let me be, then I might be able to build upon that framework. What? Yes, I know you were all real once. I never was. There was a Pauline and a Preda. There never was a Lisa. But there is now. Even if I was only a figment of Wilhelm's imagination, I am a figment come to life now. You must understand that. You must stop. You must be quiet. You must give me peace. You were all real once, and I never was, but... But you had your time, and now, now this time is mine. I am not a part of you. You are a part of me. You are a part of Liesel. I am Liesel. I, I am Liesel. Thank you. new questions. I'm whole and I'm sane, but what am I? Am I human? In all the world there's no other creature like me. I'm unique. I'm alone. What place can I have in the world of men? There's only one place where I can go now to find the answers that I need. I must confront my creator. I've been expecting you. When I saw the files missing, I suspected what you were doing. But I knew you would not find all of your answers out there. That eventually, you would be forced to come back to me. If you survive, that is. If you were at least, but then who? Wilhelm, are you all right? What should I do? There is nothing to be done. The damage is too great, I fear. No, it's not fair. There's so much I still need to know. So much only you can answer. This is too easy of a way out for you, Wilhelm. You owe me more than this. Yes, that is true. Though it seems fate would have it otherwise. Bringing her here, right at this moment. What a fool I've been not to realize. The missing food, the servants' night terrors. It was her all along. Who is she? Your sister. My sister? Have you never wondered why you were so perfect? You were not the first. I tried several times before, but none survived except her, and she was a patchwork thing, showing every flaw I made in her creation. Not even capable of speech. During my last attempt, I think she understood somehow, and she escaped one night during a storm. She ran in through a deluge in the river, which was swollen with rain. She slipped in and floundered. I searched the river for days, but never found a body. I had assumed she had drowned and had been washed down the stream. And I think she'd been living here all along. This ring, this belonged to Jurgen. 
No doubt it was she who killed him. But why? Jealousy, I imagine. Jealousy? Of you, Liesel. <laughs> you had everything she had not. A home, friends, beauty, love. So then I did kill Jurgen. If I thought... No. Don't even think that. I killed Jurgen. <coughs> I did what should not have been done. And tonight I have been paid in full. I wonder what made her come back. She wanted to be near her father. Father? I suppose I am father to you both in a way. I, sorry, Liesel. I did not mean to leave you in the form. Don't try to move. Pity her, Liesel. She has killed me, but it is not her fault. Take care of her when I am gone. But, but you are my creator. Who will take care of me? I am not your creator. What I did was out of selfishness. I wanted someone to love and be loved by in return. I never thought of what you might want. True creation is never selfish. But you made me. Did I make you? Did I make your arms, your flesh, your eyes? I merely put together the pieces of a puzzle. And when I did not like the picture that resulted, in my egotism, I tried to paint it over again with a new design. Then I'm more lost than I was before. I've quieted the voices of Greta, of Pauline, but I don't know what to believe in. How shall I find my way in the world? You left to find out who you were, to learn something of your past. But you were not Greta, or Pauline, or any of the others. You are all of these, and yet more, just like any child, a combination of each parent, yet something more altogether. You feel lost and unsure, totally alone. These feelings you share with the rest of us. You find yourself strange, freakish, and worthy of love. But these feelings you share with us also as well. So you see, you are the same as us in every way that matters. This is what it is to be human. We heard the... Bernadette, wait! I am dying and have no time. Lisa is innocent of any crime. That creature killed Jurgen, through no fault of hers. Make sure justice is done when I'm gone, and let it be merciful. Do you understand? I understand, sir. With all my heart. Forgive? I forgive. Perhaps that is the kindest end after all. Liesl, you must destroy the notes. This must never be done again. We have not the wisdom. Promise. I'm sorry, Liesl. I forgive you, Father. Don't, don't carry that guilt with you. You should be happy. For soon, you'll have what you always wanted, and you'll be with Anna again. <coughs> Do you really think so? Yes, I... I think I do. I'll try to make you proud, Father. You already have.
We'll make all the arrangements in the morning if you like. Would you like that, Fraulein? Wait. Make the arrangements for me. What do you mean? Sir Frankenstein's will, Fraulein. He, he had no close relatives. He left everything to you. I'm sorry. I thought you knew. No, I, I did not. Will you be saying that, Fraulein? No, I, I think not. The house of Frankenstein has too many demons for me to be happy here. And its shadows stretch all across Europe. Too many memories everywhere I look. Where will you go then, Fraulein? Perhaps by crossing the ocean, I can finally leave my phantoms behind. A new world for, for a new woman. Fraulein? A little joke, Sophie. Wilhelm would have understood. So 
Since when have you cared what society thought? I don't. But I do care when a promise made is broken. If I have broken faith with you, then so be it. I have done nothing, but I cannot help how I feel. She does not love you, Wilhelm. But she will. Madeline, I should take it very poorly if you were to take advantage of Wilhelm in the state he is in. Rupert, would you shoot a duck swimming in a lake? Of course not. Where is the sport in that? Exactly. We both have our rules, you see. Yo, what? I will. I'll take her away, no matter the danger. Everything to pre prevent this is true. Did you really? Oh. Smack! <laughs> <laughs> no words, demon! I'm sorry, I must. Let there be light! last night that I intended to do a bit of hunting this morning. Oh yes, now I remember. It seems that no matter the time of year, there is always something worth killing out in those woods. Barbaric. What was it to be today, Rupert? Rabbit. What is it, German? Jürgen. Jürgen? Please call him Jürgen. No. Jürgen. So he's got the ocean, Jürgen? It's Jürgen? Jürgen. <laughs> what is it, Jürgen? The weather looks suspicious, Wilhelm. It could be tonight. Is everything else in readiness? For the most part, there is still the matter of the brain. Leave that to me. That was my intention. Not that I could have had any other, since I cannot fathom your own intentions. You do not need to understand them. I suppose not. Well, I will leave you to your thoughts. Your anger is unjustified. You join me of your own free will. I did not seek you out. Have I not been valuable? Would you rather I were not here? Not at all. 